I would say the majority of you watching this video right now would agree with me if I said that Apple makes a pretty good smartwatch. More than likely, most of you would agree with me as well if I added to that, that within that smartwatch, Apple makes a pretty good fitness tracker. The question arises for us right now, however, is with the advent and the announcement of the Apple Watch Series 4, are they actually going to be changing the game by upping the ante of things they do well to include a medical device on your wrist? That's the discussion of today's Transplant Helper, so go ahead and stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome to the Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle, and yes, eventually I was going to have to get to this topic. Is the Apple Watch Series 4 going to be a game changer in the healthcare industry, especially when it comes to cardiology and pulmonary patients, which directly affects a majority and a large number of us as transplant patients. Now, I've already got a ton of questions on this. I've been trying to answer them as best I can. And I finally decided, you know what, just stop. It's still early on. Let's produce a video. Let's answer these questions. And let's try to decide together if the Apple Watch Series 4 is going to be a good buy and a real good deal for us as transplant patients, again, especially cardiology and pulmonary patients, as far as adding a medical device to our wrist that maybe potentially could save our lives. Now, before we get into that part of the discussion, let me say in the beginning, Apple makes some pretty bold claims with the Apple Watch Series 4 as far as this technology goes. But there's no argument there. There are a few things Apple already does very well. For example, number one, Apple Watch is a smartwatch. You can't argue that. Hands down, they were created to become a smartwatch, to be the smartwatch, and they still kind of lead the industry in that area. Now, there are a few heavy hitters out there, a few game players such as the Samsung Gears and a few other products that compete pretty well but overall hands down the first thing that comes to mind when you think smartwatch is probably an Apple Watch if you're an Apple user especially so no doubt it is a smartwatch number two there's no doubt Apple has been building into its technology since it's in its beginning really in the watch industry it's been building into that a fitness tracker, and it's good at that, okay? Fitbit still leads the industry, especially with its newer products, which are pretty much similar to Apple Watches as far as the way they're shaped, the way they look, and even much of what they do. But Apple is still competing. They're hanging in there. They're really giving Fitbit a run for its money. Even some of the older series or generations of these watches Apple's doing a pretty good job as a fitness tracker. In the third place, and tied directly to that, Apple for a long time has been a pretty good heart rate monitor on your wrist. Now, if you want a basic heart rate monitor, certainly Fitbit's probably got a better choice for you, more affordable, and maybe even a better fit for your wrist. But if you're already into the smartwatch side of things, hey, they've got a great heart monitor already built into all the Apple Watches. So if you're looking for that, it's already there. Now, with the Apple Watch Series 4, however, they've added a few features, added a few possibilities there that really may up the ante. And the first one has to do with that number three, that heart rate monitor. They have said in the new heart rate monitor, not only is it going to be more accurate, more true, uh, more set to what's real in your life, they put a few alarms in there. They're actually going to let you know if your heart rate goes too high or too low. So if you go into something like atrial, fib, or VTAC, that sort of thing those fast-paced rhythms which are almost like just flutters and and vibrations they're going to detect that and they're going to let you know about that and that can be important in some situations on the other end of that spectrum if your heart rate goes really really low where there's not enough blood volume being pumped where there's a problem going on because of that Apple's going to notify you. They're going to detect that on your wrist, and they're going to let you know that that's taking place. And that can be a good thing, because if you're like I am, and you grew up and you lived as a cardiology patient all your life, you pretty much got to where you were almost ignoring uh, those heart rates, and you weren't necessarily connecting with them with any particular events, at least unless you were already thinking in that mindset. And so by an Apple Watch going off and saying, yeah, you're actually out running right now and your heart rate's 60, that's not good. Or on the other end of that spectrum saying, hey, you're actually laying in the bed now trying to take a nap and your heart rate's 200, that's certainly not good. And Apple can notify you about that and that new feature that's added to or enhanced, I should say, in the Apple Watch Series 4 could be a potential good thing. So there's no argument. Apple does smartwatches, they do fitness trackers, and they do heart rate monitors very 
well. However, here's the big thing. With the Apple Watch Series 4s that were just announced and probably released by the time you watch this video and available to you as the public, they added to that that in addition to that heart rate monitor, things were going to get a whole lot more technical, including the fact they boast and brag that now within the Apple Watch Series 4, you can actually have an EKG performed on your wrist. Now, I think technically Apple called it the ECG. Same thing as an EKG is the way we've already said it. But anyway, electrocardiogram on your wrist. Now, first of all, we asked the question, Apple, can you actually do this? Yes, Apple is actually doing it. They're doing it by a series or method, which they use where there's a monitor that's already built in, but yet been enhanced, that puts its pressure against your wrist. And if you reach over and touch what they call the crown or the little dial on the side of the watch, you can actually take an electrocardiogram or EKECG right on your wrist. And that can be very beneficial if that's true, if it's correct, and if it's accurate. And Apple says that it is. Matter of fact, they're boasting that they just got FDA approval to actually put this device on your wrist. So you would assume if the FDA approves it, it has to be something that works, that's effective, and it's worth jumping into it. And for that reason, if I said nothing else, no doubt as a cardiology patient all my life, now a transplant patient that is still looking at some cardiology issues, yeah, the Apple Watch Series 4, probably be a pretty good buy, could be a life changer and even a life saver if I can monitor those heart rates, be alarmed or alerted when that happens, and if I can actually do an EKG on myself, what a deal that is. If you've had an electrocardiogram done at the doctor's office and it costs you or the insurance company combined six, eight, a thousand dollars, what a good deal. Buy a watch, do it anytime you want, right? Well, back away, maybe not. Again, Apple, it does a thumbs up job as far as smartwatches, a thumbs up job as far as fitness trackers, a thumbs up job as far as, you know, heart rate monitors. Apple Watch does kind of a thumbs in job at doing EKGs. Now, you say, Jim, are you about to call out Apple and say what they're doing is not true? No. What Apple is doing is completely legitimate. As I just said, the FDA has approved it. However, if you'll dig and do your research, and I'm going to help you do that. I'm going to put some links beneath this video in the description, which you can click on and go to. You'll find out that when Apple outset to do the studies behind creating this technology and having it to be approved by the FDA, FDA they basically basically had two different studies done. I, maybe I shouldn't say they had two done, but they presented two to the FDA. And both of those studies uh, involved a number of people. For example, the first study basically had 580 people involved in it. And the gist of that study, again, I'll link it below. You can read it for yourself. The gist of that study was that when they put these uh, devices on about 580 people and tested them, they found out among the 580 people, it worked on about 90% of the people. And you say, well, Jim, that's pretty good odds, right? 90%, it worked. That's great. It, it worked as an EKG. It detected these bad rhythms, high or low rhythms, especially atrial fibrillation. It did its job. Yeah, true. 90% is good. However, what that left out was about 10%. 10% of the people who were tested in this part of the study, it was found it couldn't even detect the rhythm to begin with. And among those people, out of those 580 people that were tested, about 98% of them actually had a rhythm caught, okay? So out of that number, which was lowered to about 90%, about 98% of the 90% had a rhythm that was caught. So you still say, well, Apple did its job. Yeah, that's pretty much the first part of the first study. Now, when the second study was done, which by the way, the first study was called one study. That's it. I don't know who did the study. When the second study was sent out and done by Stanford University, they did some of the same testing. They did some of the same checking. They came back with a little bit different numbers. As a matter of fact, they tested this product or this idea at least on 226 patients. So a lot lower number, 226 patients. They test this product and basically the way they did it, they put an Apple Watch Series 1. That's what it was then but they put an Apple Watch Series 1 or higher on anybody who had one, okay? They said, if you got one, raise your hand. You can be a part of the study. They then downloaded the app on there, which was their heart rate app, and in addition to that, they began to monitor that, but at the same time, they offer these people 
a real device, a real 24-hour type heart monitor type thing or something they could wear for upwards of a week that was detecting their rhythms at the same time that the watch was. Now, while they did this, what they discovered is that the Apple Watch only detected about 78%, lower than the 90, but only detected about 78% of those rhythms that were out there. So when the real monitor caught it, about 78% of the time, the Apple Watch caught it. And you say, well, that's a little bit lower number. Yeah, and when you add to that, out of that 226 people, only about 41% of those people even had an event, as they call it. 41% had an event, so out of the 41%, it detected 78%. So now the numbers have come way down, and what is that saying about this product? It's not necessarily 100% accurate. You say, well, Jim, what do you expect? I mean, I didn't think it was going to be perfect. Nothing is perfect. Maybe even the one in your doctor's office is not perfect. Yeah, that's all true, but let's keep something in mind here. When you go into the, to the clinic, when you go into the doctor's office, and you're in a, a moment where you need an ECG, EKG done, they're more than likely in that office going to put a minimum of about a four-lead EKG on you. In the real scenario, they're going to put at least a 12-lead EKG on you. However, the Apple Watch, guess what? It has one lead. Just one. Right there on your wrist. Of course, you're touching there the crown, kind of adding maybe you might say two leads to that. But still, 78% accuracy. Now, here's a real problem in that. Is 78% people are getting notified of an event, this possible atrial fibrillation, coming out of any kind of group, especially among the millions upon millions that are potentially going to be putting these Apple Watches on their wrists. If 78% of those people are being notified of an event, what's happening to the other percentage? What's happening to the balance of that 100% total of people who are possibly having or not having an atrial fibrillation event. I don't know. Apparently, they're not being notified. Apparently, they're not finding out about what's going on with them. Or maybe they are, but they're getting a false positive. You see, the problem with a device like this is that we as Americans, probably as the citizenship of the world, but I know as Americans, we love technology. I love technology. And it's likely that eventually we could get to a point of saying, you know what, if I have a problem, if my heart rate gets out of whack or if I need an EKG, who needs an EKG? I've got one on my wrist. And we're going to eventually get to a point where we trust it too much. On the one hand, we may trust it so much as to say, well, you know what? I was woozy. I was lightheaded. I was dizzy. I had some chest pain, whatever. But my watch didn't catch anything, so there must not be anything wrong. The other side of that group may say to themselves, you know what? I just saw an event. I just saw an atrial fib. I'm in trouble. I got to go to the doctor. I got to go right now. We rush off to the doctor. Turns out it was one of those pulse positives that are available out there or the 10% to which this technology will not even work. And here you go. You've now run up medical bills. Potentially you're being put on medications because you know as well as I do, too many times doctors are quick to throw out the pill, throw out the medication, and say, you know what, I didn't see anything wrong with you today, but you're right. If you had a funny rhythm, take this pill, you'll be all better. And we now have a problem, okay? So here's what I'm saying to you. Am I telling you that the Apple Watch Series 4 is junk? Don't buy it. No, okay? This technology potentially has some real, real game-changing potential out there for us or for anyone in the world. But if you go out and do that, be cautious and understand that it's not going to be 100% accurate. It's not going to be something you can rely on and above everything else. You need to see your doctor. If you're concerned about a cardiac event, if you're concerned about bad heart rhythms or something like that, let me show you a surefire way of having a clue that that's even going on. Right there. You see that? No Apple Watch needed. I can feel my pulse. Now, that's especially important for people like you and I. If you're a heart transplant recipient who's had that vagus nerve cut and you don't necessarily feel all of those beats and all those pains like you once did, there it is. There's your heart rate. 
You can do it on your wrist too, but hey, that's quick, that's easy, that's fast, that's in a hurry. That's what I suggest. If you want to buy an Apple Watch, go get one. Great smartwatch, great fitness tracker, great heart rate monitor, perhaps even a great ECG first sign, first warning. You know, here it is. At least you need to check it out. I agree. Just understand, this is not going to be the end all nor the be all of medical technology or medical devices on our wrist, at least not for now. I appreciate you joining me today on The Transplant Helper. My name is Jim Merle. I hope this information has helped you out in some way. If it has, go ahead and give a big thumbs up to this video. If you don't like it at all, give it a thumbs down. That's probably what Apple's going to do. You can join in on their bandwagon. They probably won't like this, but let's tell the truth about it. These things are not perfect. Now, I want you to comment below. Are you an Apple user at all? If so, do you own an Apple Watch? And then add to that, do you potentially plan to get one of these Apple Watch Series 4s? Do you think it's going to matter to you? I think that it could, as long as we're aware of its true potential. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, all of you, please stay stronger, friends.